So one of the things that we always hear about in Java is this idea that something is considered an object. And we always throw around the term object-oriented programming as well. But we never really talked too terribly much about uh, this term and how it operates. Well, one of the things that we do is when we write out a, a program, we start off with public class, and then we give it some class name. The class name is, uh, at least for what we've been doing so far, uh, it's whatever I, I named my file. So if I have uh, test.java, then my class name was also going to be test. So now that I've developed this out, one of the things that we have seen is this term class. What does that mean? Well, class is sort of more of a concept. And every time we build a, a, a class, we're, we're implementing the concept of that class. So let's say, for example, instead of class name, we said student. Well, what we're saying is I'm going to create the concept of what a student is. And so when we start to talk about implementing a class, implementing a class, it breaks down into three particular portions. One is known as the identity. One is known as the state. And just to write in or properties. And then the third is known as my behavior or my methods. So when we think about a student for a second, if we think about how a student kind of falls in line, it has these three categories. It has that first one. It has uh, the idea of identity. And this is because if we think about it, no two students are the same. You know, we could say something like S1 equals uh, new student. And what's going on here is I'm saying that this is an implementation of my student class. I've now done what's known as instantiate a student. I've, let me write that word out there, in and she ate a student. Now what that means is now I've created one version of a student called S1. If I come in right below that and I say S2 equals new student, what I've just done is I've created a second student. I've instantiated a second student. Now these both have their own unique identity to each other each one of these also have some unique properties to each other. Some unique properties, a unique state to them. We can look at, say for example, S1. Let's just kind of move over here for a second. And we look at S1. And I said, make it a new student. Well, even before we get to student, we have to think about what a student has. Uh, you know, a student has, you know, a first name, probably has a last name. I'd hope they have a last name. You know, it would be a little weird if his name was just John or Tim or Steve. But he also probably has something like an address, you know, how we mail uh, billing information to them, you know, how we get in contact with them. And if he's a student, he probably has some identification to him. He has some way for me to uh, store this information. Now each one of these, these are unique to this implementation of student. So his name might be a string named Adam. Last name might be Goita. He might live at 40 a 4500 uh, Blue Clay Road. No, that's not my real address. That's Cape Fear Community College's address. And my ID, if I was a student, might be something like 00001. Or, just like it is, uh, I actually happen to have a faculty ID. It's 
probably exactly the same thing that you have. And those are unique to me. Now again, notice how I made a second student. I made two students here. So what if I made a second? S2 equals new student. Well again, they are going to have their own first name, their own last name, their own address, their own uh, student ID as well. So we could look at this as, you know, since uh, we just had a wonderful, wonderful bowl of the super, you know, we have someone like uh, Russell Wilson. And I don't know if he's going to be living in uh, Seattle for long, but and he probably has another student ID with him as well. One, two, one, uh, two, two, two. There. Those are unique to uh, Russell versus to myself. There we are. So those states are unique to ourselves. We both have our own identity. S1 and S2, we both have our own properties, and then we also have some methods. These methods, these behaviors, are certain things that a student generically are going to have. So what are some things that some behaviors of a student? Well, if we think about a student, for example, we have maybe something like an enroll, which that method, what it does is it uh, takes in some string course and it adds it to a collection of courses that the student already belongs to. Or, say for example, uh, they have a withdrawal. The same kind of concept's gonna go in there. They're gonna have a string with that course that they withdraw from. Or we can just have something simple like what's known as a getter, like get name. And that can change, uh, that can retrieve my student's name. That way I can actually access that information. I don't have access to it right now. The final one is we could think uh, if I have a get name, well, what happens if they get married? Uh, you know, people change their names all the time. So what happens if they get married? So I probably have something like a set name, also known as a setter. So again, these students, I've created these two properties, these two, I, these two instances, instances, of students, here's one, here's two, S1, S2. They both have their own unique identity. That way I can refer to S1 or S2. They have their own unique properties, uh, Russell Wilson versus Adam Guida, and they have their own unique methods. Get name, for example, get name is going to return Adam for S1, S1.get name is going to give me Adam versus S2 dot get name is going to give me uh, Russell. So with these three things, we then now have an object.